So this is what FreeDOS typically looks like, and you're probably very used to this blocky font that you see in every screenshot ever. It's using that standard VGA font that's actually provided by your virtual machine. So if you're using VirtualBox or QEMU or GNOME boxes or DOS EMU2 or whatever virtual machine you're running, this font is actually not being provided by FreeDOS. It's actually being loaded by uh, the virtual machine itself. But what if you wanted to use a different font? Because just like you can use a different font in, uh, let's say, Windows or Linux or Mac, whenever you bring up a terminal window, uh, you, know, you can choose your own font there. But what if you wanted to pick a different font for FreeDOS? Well, it turns out it actually is possible to do that. And that's by loading a different font over the in-memory font. And I'm going to show you how to do that in today's video. Now, let me uh, show you, first of all, the program that you do that with is a program called GNU uh, CHCP, which is our load font program. Uh, you need to uh, install that as part of the utilities group. And if you did a base install, you probably don't have that package installed. So let's go ahead and run FD Impulse. That's the standard package manager under FreeDOS. Now, in the left-hand side where I've got the package groups, I'm going to scroll all the way down to find utilities. Just hit tab to go over the other side. And then if I scroll down a bit, you can find under G, GNU CHCP, which is the load font, and then the uh, separate package for just the fonts that are used by that other package to load those fonts. Now, uh, here I've just gone ahead and installed them uh, because I did a base install. Uh, if you did a full install, you probably have these packages installed in your system already. So let's go ahead and uh, back out to the system. Now, you, notice, you may have noticed that those got installed to a directory called uh, util and then uh, gnu fonts and do a directory here. Yeah, ooh, that's a long list here. So let's uh, 58 files. Let's do a directory uh, that's wide. So we can see everything on one screen at one time. So you can see all these different font files. And so to load one of these into memory, you're going to run the command GNU CHCP. And then uh, let's just pick one called, oh, let's pick computer. And then I hit return on that. And you can see it's now changed the font on the system. And so if I ran an application, like let's say edit, uh, you can see it's using this uh, new font. Uh, no guarantees if you go into graphics and then come back, but uh, this is the uh, uh, the standard text font that's now been replaced. I'll just exit out of this here with uh, Alt X. Uh, now, what if I wanted to change this? Let's go ahead and change it back to the standard font so, so I can type the rest of this. So GNU change uh, CP, and then the font is called standard. So there we go. Now I've gone back to sort of the standard font that you would expect to see. Now, how would I... Uh, put that into uh, uh, something where it can actually run through all of them. Well, a, a good way to list this out is to do a directory that's uh, bare, and that means it's not going to give us our, our heading at the top with the volume and drive C and things like that. It's not going to give us the footer either with the total number of files and directories. Uh, and then I'm going to do a directory, uh, uh, a bare directory of all the uh, FNT files. I'm going to put this into a file called, well, let's just call it fonts.lst. Now, if I go into that file, let me go ahead and edit it here real quick, edit fonts.lst, you can see now I've got a list of all the different fonts. So what I'm trying to do here is I'm going to build a batch file where I can run through all of these uh, fonts at one time. Uh, what I really want to do is before each line here, I want to put in a uh, uh, that, that GNU CHCP command. Let's go ahead and exit out of that. One way that I could do that is I could use a sed command, and I've installed sed out of the Unix utilities, and so I can do sed uh, dash e, and then I'm going to do a uh, version replace of any time I have the beginning of a line, that's the caret there, and I'm going to replace that with uh, gnu chcp space, and that's the end of it. And that's from, uh, we'll take it from the file fonts.lst and we'll put it into a file called fonts.bat. Let's go ahead and edit fonts.bat. And uh, there we go. I've got GNU CHCP before each line. And now I want to uh, put a pause command uh, between each one so that way we can actually see what we're looking at uh, after we run it. So I'm just jump, jump, jump to the end of the file here. And I'm going to put in a uh, pause command. And so I'm going to 
highlight that and then do edit copy and then paste 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 all 58 of those files so i want to have 57 entries on here by the time i'm done i'm keeping an eye on my uh what line i'm on you can see there at the bottom of the screen it tells me what line i'm on and because i want to make sure i stop on line two and here we are there and so now i've got a uh GNU CHCP command that loads a font and then it does a pause. And that just means it's going to uh, ask me to press any key to continue. Let's go ahead and save this file. So we'll do an Alt F and then save. And then we're going to exit just Alt X. Now, as we load each font, you'll actually see the entire screen change. And so let's pay attention to what we've got here. Uh, let's go ahead and run the fonts command. That's the batch file I just created. So now it's loading these different fonts one at a time. So this is what the 8 by 10 font looks like. We've got a couple of these uh, fonts here, these standard fonts at uh, uh, the 8 pixel wides. Here you've got 8 by 11 sans serif, 8 by 14, a little bit easier to read, uh, 8 by 8. So if you prefer the spacing between each line, this would be a good font to use. Uh, the antique font, it looks actually kind of nice i can i kind of think i kind of like that it takes up a lot of vertical space for me uh archon uh now what is this this is uh backwards so if you look at every letter uh this is each letter uh spelled backwards so it's just letter by letter and uh so maybe if you were to uh trying to read something on screen you didn't want somebody uh, shoulder surfing maybe this is something you'd use or if you want to play a prank on somebody. Uh, Big Serif is another one. That looks kind of nice. I might use that one. There's the uh, Block Sans Serif. Uh, block Font. Bold Font. Here's Breeze, which is uh, kind of a thin font. Broadway, sort of that old, uh, what is that, 1920s, 1930s uh, signs that you see on Broadway. The computer font that I loaded earlier, so it's sort of an old uh, optical character recognition, OCR style font. Courier, sort of a standard courier font. Uh, this is, of course, the Cyrillic font. So if you uh, are a Russian English, uh, a Russian uh, speaker, you probably are recognizing the letters, but obviously it's not making any sense because these are uh, English letters, but then just translated into a Cyrillic uh, letter. So it's not really spelling a, a Russian word here. Uh, the Art Deco font, sort of an empty font. So you can see every letter has sort of a, an empty middle to it. The Euro type, the fat font, kind of a bold looking font, but I'm not seeing any spaces uh, in between, uh, for example, the O and continue. The Finnish font, Lat font, so it looks kind of like a, a very clean terminal font. Uh, might be a little bit small for some folks to read. Uh, the France font, Fresno, Futura, and we have a couple of different versions of Futura, one and two. And then we have the Greek font. So again, if you're a Greek speaker, you're probably going to recognize the letters, but these are not going to make sense in terms of words because, again, we've just swapped out uh english letters uh for uh greek letters and so it's not spelling greek words here it just happens to be using uh for example the capital p on pressing a key to continue uh is a capital pi so all it's doing here is just swapping it to a greek letter the hearst font another thin font uh this is the uh the hebrew font so same as I've said before so if you uh speak hebrew then this is gonna you're gonna recognize the letters but obviously it's not forming Hebrew words, this is just translating letter by letter. Hylas. Uh, this is inverted, the inverted font. And uh, so again, just look, just like the backwards font where each letter was sort of uh, flipped uh, horizontally, this is each letter that's been flipped vertically. So if you are, again, trying to read something on the screen and you don't want shoulder surfing to happen, you could flip it into the inverted font. Uh, if you practice with this font, you could probably read that pretty well. Uh, or if you wanted to uh, play a prank on somebody, this is <laughs> another font that you might use. The italics font, which I think looks kind of nice. 
Uh, the kids font, we have two versions of a kid font. So there's the there's one sort of a handwritten font, and there's kids too, which is slightly uh, different. And then we have the LCD font, where everything kind of looks like it's been uh, printed at, using uh, LCD segments like you'd find on an old-style LCD clock. The medieval font, kind of a classic font there, kind of fancy looking. The modern font, again, we have a couple versions of that, modern one, and there's modern two. And then the Norway font. And then uh, the reverse font. So what this is, the reverse 8x8. Eight eight. So it's just putting everything uh, with a uh, black text and a white background. Uh, there's also another version of that is just called plain reverse. So the slightly bigger uh, letters on that. And then here we've got uh, the Roman font. We've got two versions of that. Uh, this version of the Roman and that version of Roman. And I think for myself, I, I used to use an old Sun workstation uh, in college. And I kind of liked the font that they had at the at the terminal. Uh, and so this is kind of reminds me of that one if you uh, were a Sun workstation user. The sans serif font. Uh, another one that's a, a sans serif style font, sans serif. The Scott font, which to me looks like the uh, uh, Star Trek Next Generation font. And then the script font, so it's a handwritten sort of uh, fancy font. Silver font which looks very much like the standard font. And there's the standard font. And then the stretch, where everything's been stretched a little bit horizontally, so you're not getting as much uh, height. Uh, the super font, so it's basically everything's been superscript. The surreal font, so kind of a, uh, a neat-looking, uh, sort of wild-looking uh, font. Another one sort of handwritten style, I guess I'd describe. Uh, Swiss, we've got a couple of those. We have Swiss 1, 2, and 3. So there's 1, and there's Swiss 2. And there's Swiss 3. They're all pretty much the same style font. Uh, we have the Tecton font. And we have two more. One is the uh, the Thai font. So again, this is just swapping out the letters uh, for letters from the Thai alphabet. And then the last one that we have is Thin. And so if you're looking for a font that's a little bit easier to read, this might be the one for you. So you know, what kind of font do you think is easiest to read? So it really depends on what is your personal preference. And so you can pick the font that suits your eyes best. And so again, if I were to run the uh, program, if I were to run FD Impulse in this case, uh, you can see it's going to use that new font. And so whatever font you want to use, you can uh, set the font to uh, be exactly what uh, suits your needs best. So what do you think about the video? If you'd like to uh, see other topics on uh, how to use the command line and how to make your experience better, let me know in the comments below. Uh, also, thank you to everybody who supports me on Patreon. You really do make this channel happen, and I really appreciate your support. Some of you are sponsoring me at a higher level, and I wanted to thank you especially here for that. So thank you very much for that. Visit our website at freedos.org. Join us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter. And consider supporting me on Patreon. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks.